Hi, I'm Claire, and today we've got another round of most anticipated book releases. I'm super excited to be recording this because hyping books is one of my favorite things to do, and there are so many exciting books coming out really soon or that have just come out. Actually, this video, as you will have seen from the title, is covering books that came out in June and are coming out in July. So most of the books in this video are actually already out because I'm filming it a little bit late. And then I'll do August and September at the end of July, if that makes sense. Usually I try to film these every three months and I try to limit myself to like maybe 12 or 15 books for three months, something that reasonably I could read if I was really focusing on reading my most anticipated books. But this time around, I have decided to cast a much, much wider net and try to make it more of like a resource for everybody who might have missed that some of these books are coming out because with COVID hogging the news cycle all the time, it is just more difficult than usual to find out about new books that are coming out. So I've got 18 books to talk about just for June and July. And then I've got the same again for August and September. So yes, without further ado, no, we have to do some further ado actually, because I need to let you know that all of this information I have sourced from Goodreads, it is subject to change. A lot of it is US publication dates. And so publication date might be different in different territories. Now, Let's get started with books that came out in June that I didn't talk about in my previous Most Anticipated Books video. First up in June, we have A Song of Wraith and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. This one came out June 2nd from Bolzer and Bray, and it is the first in a fantasy duology that's inspired by West African folklore. We follow two main protagonists, Malik, who is a refugee and enters into a bargain with a vengeful spirit, as well as Karina, who is a prince Princess whose mother died and she wants to revive her using ancient dark magic but for that she needs the beating heart of a king therefore she starts this competition where the person who wins will win her hand in marriage and of course she intends to kill them once they're a king so she can use their heart for that potion and Malik enters the competition because the vengeance that he wants is against Karina, Karina herself or her family, the ruling family, I'm not quite sure, but I do love a magical competition and this one sounds like it will have some high drama to it. Next up, we have a whole bunch of exciting books that came out on June 23rd, starting with Hunted by the Sky by Tanas Batena. This is the first book in the Wrath of Ambar series, and it came out from Farrar, Strauss, and Giroux. Sorry, by the way, I'm going to have to be looking at my laptop to the side. I tried not to do it for the first book, and it took me so long to record that one, uh, and I have 17 more to go, so apologies for that. But this book is a gripping adventure set in a world inspired by medieval India. And we follow Ghoul, a young woman who's spent her entire life running away from places because she's got this star-shaped birthmark on her arm. And it is basically a death sentence in that world. But at some point in all of her running away, she runs into a group of vengeful women called the Sisters of the Golden Lotus. And they take her in, they train her in warrior magic so that she can take her revenge. Dun dun dun! This one sounds pretty exciting as well. Next, we have The Angel of Crows by Catherine Addison, who previously wrote The Goblin Emperor. This one came out from Tor Books, and it is one that I know so, so many people are excited because they love The Goblin Emperor so, so much not read it yet, it's on my list. I'm gonna get to it really, really soon. But to get back to this new book, The Angel of Crows is set in an alternate 1880s London where vampires, angels, werewolves live kind of peacefully amongst humans and they're not the greatest monsters around. It is 1880s London, so this book is going to feature Jack the Ripper in some way or other and kind of like the monstrousness of human beings as well as supernatural beings. And the blur 
blurb leaves off on a mysterious note about how angels can fall, and when they do fall, that fall is, quote, like a nuclear bomb in both the physical and metaphysical worlds. So that's pretty interesting. Next, we have a couple of romance sequels. Out from Avon, we have Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert, the second book in the Brown Sisters series, and the sequel to Get a Life, Chloe Brown, which I'm reading right now and absolutely, absolutely loving. In this book, we follow, of course, the titular Danny Brown as she embarks on some fake dating, one of my favorite, favorite romance tropes. There's a video of Danny being rescued from her office building by a friend of hers, and the video goes absolutely viral, and for that reason, Danny and this guy start fake dating, which, you know, I'm not gonna complain when there's fake dating for reasons <laughs> with a capital R, because I love fake dating, and I'm loving the first book, so can't wait to get to this one. Next, we have Party of Two by Jasmine Gallery. This one's out from Berkeley Books, and it is the fifth book in her Wedding Date series. I've only read the first one, so I'm not exactly sure which characters we're following here, like how they're related to the first couple, but I love the tropes that are coming in this book so, so much. I'm really, really excited to read it. We follow Olivia and Max, who meet kind of at random in a hotel bar one night and start flirting away. But that is before Olivia, who is a lawyer, realizes that Max is this hotshot junior senator who's always in the spotlight. So when they start dating, they have to do it a little bit in secret before they kind of go public with their relationship and are faced with a lot of media scrutiny. Now, this is a dynamic I really love in fanfic, so I'm curious to see how it does in original fiction. Goddess in the Machine by Laura Beth Johnson came out on June 30th from Razorbill, and it is the first in a series. We follow a woman called Andra who went into cryogenic sleep for a trip across the galaxy, and she expected to wake up about a hundred years after she went to sleep, but in fact, it's been a thousand years. It is now the year 3102, and everybody around her is revering her as a goddess. Now, of course, Andrew knows she's not a goddess, but she kind of has to play along with this in order to figure out what's going on, what went wrong, and how she can maybe get back to Earth. That one's really intriguing to me because I've seen a lot of stories about, you know, cryogenic sleep pods going wrong on a long haul trip and how you deal with that, time dilation between people who were in cryogenic sleep and traveled far away and then when they come back, but I've not seen something where it's like you were meant to be asleep for a little while and then it's a thousand years later. I'm sure it exists, I'm just saying I've not seen a lot of it personally. Also on June 30th, we got Mexican Gothic, the new book by Silvia Moreno Garcia, which was out from Del Rey. Now, this one I was aware of before. I didn't put it on my previous list because, like I said, I tried to curate those for things that I will myself be reading. And though I love Moreno Garcia's writing, I am not super fond of thrillers and crime books, and that is what this is. So I was going to kind of wait around to see the reviews and how crimey it is. Anyway, this book, a lot, a lot, a lot of people are excited about. It is set in glamorous 1950s Mexico, and we follow Noemi, a debutante who receives this frantic letter from her cousin who's just got married, asking for somebody to come save her from like mysterious doom. So Noemi travels to the countryside to this mansion where her cousin now lives with her husband, and she's going to kind of investigate the mystery. So as you can tell from the title and the fact that there's a mysterious spooky mansion, it sounds pretty gothic, which I do like, but I've also seen it described as crime and thriller. Is it going to be for me? I don't know, but I think it's going to be for a lot of other people, though. I think people are gonna love this one. Moving on to July, we've got Unconquerable Sun by Kate Elliott. This one comes out on July 7th from Tor Books, and it is the first in a new series called The Sun Chronicle. This one I've been waiting for for a long time. It is space opera, and Tor has been describing it as a gender-swapped Alexander the Great on an interstellar scale, which, yes, I am here for that. We follow Princess Sun, the daughter of the legendary Queen Marshal Irene, who has built up the country of Kaoni 
Macedonia into a magnificent republic to be respected and feared. And Princess Sun has just come of age. However, there are some scheming noble houses and ambassadors who are plotting against her to remove her from the line of succession. And if that means that she has to die, well, you know, that would be expedient as well. So Sun has to rely on her own wits and some unlikely allies in order to survive. And when I say unlikely allies, I mean her biggest rival, her secret lover, and a dangerous prisoner of war. So that sounds pretty epic. I've somehow still never read a Kate Elliott book, even though Kate Elliott's been around writing excellent sci-fi and fantasy that a lot of my friends have been recommending for years and years and years, and I can't believe that I still haven't read like this big a name in SFF, so I need to remedy that immediately. Next up, also on June 7th, we have The Voting Booth by Brandy Colbert. This one is out from Disney Hyperion. It is a YA contemporary that takes place all in one day, apparently. We follow Marva and Duke on an election day. They are both going to vote for the first time, but Marva sees Duke be turned away from the polling place where they are both going to vote, and that is unlawful. He should be allowed to vote, but just people aren't letting him for various reasons, so Marva and Duke together kind of embark on this journey from polling place to polling place to try and figure out, like, how to get him to be allowed to vote and how to make his vote count. And then it looks like there's going to be a little bit of romance in there as well, which is kind of fun. Next up, we have Loud Black Girls. 20 black women writers ask what's next. And this one is an anthology of black British writing featuring essays from over 20 established and emerging black British writers. It comes out July 9th from Fourth Estate and it was edited and curated by Yomi Adigo and Elizabeth Uvi Benene, who previously edited the very much acclaimed anthology Slay in Your Lane. So I'm very, very curious to check this out. I haven't read Slay in Your Lane yet, but I've heard a lot of great things about it. And this is obviously a new anthology by the same team. So I'm looking forward to this one. I hope it'll be available as an audiobook somewhere to listen to. Next up on July 14th, we have The Relentless Moon by Mary Robinette Kowal. This one comes out from Tor Books and it is the third book in Kowal's Lady Astronaut series. It is set in a world where a meteor hit the US in the 1950s and therefore like accelerated both climate change and the space program because humans need to get off of Earth now that it's all gonna die very, very, very soon. In the first two book, we follow Alma York, the titular Lady Astronaut, in her fight to be allowed to become an astronaut even though she's a lady and there's a lot of sexism in those books that she has to contend with so kind of difficult to read for that reason but also they're very very good. In this third book we follow Alma's friend Nicole Worgen. At this point in the story Alma is on her way to the Mars colony but her friend Nicole who is a pilot and a fellow lady astronaut she's on the moon colony. She's one of the first settlers there and she has to use both her pilot skills and also her incredible political acumen to try and make sure that the colony is running properly and also at the same time her husband who's a senator wants to run for president and she's not very happy with all of that. I really like Nicole as a character in the first couple books so I'll be excited to read a book in her point of view at some point. Also on July 14th, but from Tor Teen, we have The Extraordinaries by T.J. Klune. This is the first book in a new series, and it is a queer coming-of-age story about a fanboy with ADHD. We follow Nick, who is the biggest, most prominent fanfic writer in the fandom for The Extraordinaries, and then he ends up meeting one of The Extraordinaries. I think it's a world where superheroes are real, and there's a bit of romance between them. This is book I was very excited for because of the fandom aspect and the ADHD aspect. If you don't know, I'm in fandom and I have ADHD, but I will point out that my friend Jenny over at Reading the End has read this and pointed out there is a very uncritical portrayal of a cop character, which she found very, very difficult to read in this present moment. She had an arc of it and although she liked it, she was very uncomfortable with that. So I will point that out as well to you. If you're interested in this, bear in mind that this 
is a part of the book and that if you can't be reading that right now, then maybe skip this one. Next up, we have Axioms and the first novel by video essayist, YouTuber and Hugo Award finalist, Lindsay Ellis. It comes out on July 21st from St. Martin's Press and it is set in an alternate 2007 where there has just been this leak suggesting that the US government might actually have had first contact with aliens. Our protagonist is Cora, who wants absolutely nothing to do with this story because it turns out the whistleblower who did the leaking is her estranged father and therefore she cannot have nothing to do with this story. Of course it's a big deal and the press wants some information and because her father's on the run she's the next best thing. But then Cora discovers evidence that suggests that the alien presence might actually have been on earth for decades before the leak which is certainly very very exciting. I love Lindsay Ellis's critical analysis, narrative analysis that she does in her videos, so I'm looking forward to see the, what she does as a writer. Next up, we have Trouble the Saints by Eli Don Johnson. This one comes out July 21st from Tor Books, and they are describing it as the night circus meets the powerful historical exploration of the Underground Railroad. So it sounds like it's going to be historical fantasy, but maybe heavier on the historical side. It is set in darkly glamorous New York City just before World War II, and we follow a girl from Harlem as she is drawn into this glittering underworld of Manhattan and once she is there she has to use her knives to strike fear into its most dangerous denizens which sounds awesome. I cannot quite stress how badass this main character sounds to me. Next up on July 28th we have Deal with the Devil by Kit Roker. This is the first book in their new Mercenary Librarians series and it comes out from Tor Books. I'm really excited for this because Kit Roker is a writing duo that's been doing best-selling romance for a while and their books usually have a kind of sci-fi-ish post-apocalyptic setting but SFF readers can't find them as easily because they're only classified as romance. Now this is the first book of theirs that is being published as SFF. It has a important romance element to it which I'm very very excited about because I always always want more romance in my SFF. This book is set in a post-apocalyptic USA where the power grid was wiped out 45 years ago and now the world is fully ravaged. Our protagonists are Nina who is a genetically altered clone and an information broker and who's trying to set up a library with her friends and also Knox who is the captain of the Silver Devils. They are a troop of um, mercenary super soldiers who went AWOL because they were ordered to slaughter some innocent civilians and they refused to do that. So sparks are going to fly and romance is going to ensue between the two of them but also there's a good bit of saving the world that is mentioned in the blurb and I always like like a good bit of saving the world, let's be honest. Next up on July 28th, we have The Care and Feeding of Waspish Widows by Olivia Waite. This one comes out from Avon Impulse and it is the second book in her Feminist Pursuit series of historical romance novels featuring women. Now the first book, The Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics, I really, really enjoyed. And in this second book, we follow Agatha and Penelope. Agatha is a widow running a printing business, but one day she finds this colony of bees in her warehouse and she has to get rid of it somehow so she calls up a beekeeper and Penelope shows up. They have some romance that starts happening and then conflict comes in when Penelope's long absent husband returns to town and she is torn between her feelings for Agatha and her loyalty for her husband who once gave her refuge and saved her. I really really enjoyed the first book in this series so I would definitely also check this one out. And finally also on July 28th we have I Kissed Alice by Anna Birch illustrated by Victoria Ying. This one comes out from Macmillan Imprint and it is a fandom book, yay! It's a YA contemporary romance between two young women called Rhodes and Eliana and they are both student at the same very competitive program at a fancy art school. They are also competing for the same scholarship that only has one spot in their day-to-day -day life. They've got this like really really strong rivalry between the two of them but what they don't 
don't realize is that they are in the same fandom and unwittingly they are actually collaborating on this graphic novel fan work that they are putting together. Obviously because it's set in fandom the two of them use pseudonyms and they don't realize that the person they're writing their graphic novel with that they are kind of maybe into and there's maybe a bit of romance there that it's the same person that they really can't stand in real life so that sounds delightful and I want it in my eyeballs right now please. So that's it this was 17 books that came out in June or are coming out in July that I thought I should tell you about. I know I said 18 at the beginning of this video but then I realized one of the things that I was gonna mention actually comes out in August. You will have to wait a tiny bit more time to hear about it. I think this this was probably enough. If I'm making you buy all of the books, uh, sorry not sorry. I do hope you enjoyed this video because I've been recording for a super long time and now I want to go and have some coffee. But if I've left out any book that you're excited about, please let me know in the comments below and I will see you very very soon. If you'd like to see more from me, you can check out a previous video on screen right now. And if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button that's on my face for a new video from me every week. I've been Claire, thanks so much for watching and see you soon.